Okay, in this video, we're going to be doing number four from the 2023 AP Calculus A, B, and B, C exams, and it's a graph analysis or given the first derivative type of problem. Let's take a look. Function f is defined on the closed interval from negative 2 to 8, satisfies f of 2 equals 1. The graph of f prime, the derivative of f, consists of two line segments and a semicircle as shown in the figure. First question, does f have a relative minimum, relative maximum, or neither at x equals 6? Give a reason for your answer. So let's first locate 6 on this graph. Uh, 6 is a 0 of the first derivative, but the first derivative does not have a sign change there. So it is neither a maximum nor a minimum. I think that's all we need to say. So f of x has neither max nor min um, at x equals 6. We have to give a reason. So my reason would be because f prime does not change sign at x equals 6. That's all we got to say. Uh, until recently, the answer to this question was always either a max or a min, but recently they've been throwing in the neither option. So always be on the lookout for that. Let's take a look at the next part. On um, what open intervals, if any, is the graph of f concave down give a reason for your answer? So we're given the graph of f prime. We want to base our answer on f prime. You look at f prime and you're like, anywhere f prime is decreasing, we know that f is going to be concave down because if f prime decreases, f double prime is negative. f double prime being negative means f is concave down. So I'm gonna say f of x is concave down on the first interval is negative two to zero. And the second interval is from four to six. I have to give a reason. So this is the graph of f prime. We wanna base it on the graph. So I will say because f prime is decreasing on those intervals and that's it. Let's take a look at the next part. Find the value of the limit as x approaches to 6 f of x minus 3x over x squared minus 5x plus 6. All right, so I might overdo this. I don't know. This is what I think you absolutely need to really kind of like answer this question. First, we're going to need to establish that the limit as x approaches to of f of x is equal to f of 2 right? Because otherwise we just know f of 2 is 1, but like is f of 2 continuous? Um, if f of 2, if f is not continuous, then f of 2 doesn't need to equal the limit. So let's establish that. Um, so I'm going to say f of x is continuous at x equals 2. And my reason for that is going to be because um, f of x is differentiable at x equals 2. And I know that is true because f prime of 2 definitely exists because I have the graph of f prime. Right, so f prime of two exists. F prime of two is actually zero. You can look and just see it. Um, so this will allow us to establish that the limit as x approaches two of f of x is equal to f of two, which is equal to one, which is what's given in the problem. So now we know that limit. The whole reason we need to know that limit is so that we can say that L'Hopital's rule applies. So uh, the limit of the top and the limit of the bottom are both going to equal zero. Maybe I won't make you watch me write all that out. So the limit of the top, the limit is x approaches to 6 f of x minus 3x. That's 6 times 1 minus 3 times 2. That's 0. Um, and then the limit of the bottom is going to be uh, your, uh, x approaches 2. So you get 4 minus 10 plus 6. So 10 minus 10 is 0. Both of those are 0. We can use L'Hopital's. So therefore, by L'Hopital's, the original limit is equal to the limit we're going to take the derivative of the top, which is 6 f prime of x minus 3, over the derivative of the bottom, which is 2x minus 5. Now we try to evaluate. We know that f prime of 2 is just 0. So we're going to get 6 times 0 minus 3 all over uh, 2 times 2, which is 4, minus 5. So that's negative 3 divided by negative 1, which is positive 3. I might have overdone a little on the justification, but definitely everything in here is correct. This would be like an optimal solution, I think. I don't know if we'll need the part that's in purple. I think we will, but we'll see. All right, next up. All right, part D. Find the absolute minimum value of f on the closed interval, negative 2 to 8. Justify your answer. I'm going to use a candidate's test. This is a classic candidate's test problem. So first up, f of x is continuous because f of x is differentiable. What does that mean? That means that the absolute Minimum is at an endpoint or a critical point. Since we have the graph of f prime, we just know the critical points are negative one, two, and six. Now I'm gonna do a lot of geometry to figure out these values. So I'm gonna set up a table, um, and I know that f of x is gonna be one, the value at f of two, 
plus the integral from 2 to x of f prime of x dx. So I'm setting it up. Um, here are my values. Use, I'm going to squeeze in 8 at the end. I forgot to do it. Uh, at 2, I know that I'm at 1. Now let's start doing some geometry. So this region here, it's 3 by negative 2 is negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. So if I went from left to right, I would lose 3. Since I'm going from right to left, I'm going to gain 3. Um, and then here, it's 1 half of 1 times 2, which is just 1. There, I would gain 1 by going from left to right. But since I'm going from right to left, I'm going to lose 1. So let's start figuring those out. So I get 1 minus the negative 3 is 4, right? And that's because I'm going from right to left instead of left to right. And then uh, for negative 2, I'm just going to do 4. I would have gained 1, but I'm going the wrong way, so I lose 1 to get 3. Um, I have plenty of videos on the candidates test. Highly recommend you check those out. Uh, now we need to figure out what's going on at 6. So this whole region here, I'm just going to kind of deal with. Uh, that's half of 4, so 2. And then this, there's a rectangle that's 4 by 2, which is 8. And then you lose half of a circle with a radius of 2. So a circle with a radius of 2 has an area of 4 pi. We get half of that, so just 2 pi. Um, so this total thing is 8 minus 2 pi. But each part of it, so from 4 to 6 and then from 6 to 8, is half of that. So each part is going to be half. That's important because we need to find the value at 6 and at 8. So at 6, we start at 1, and we're just going to add the 2. And then also we will add 4 minus pi. That's definitely bigger than 1, which is all that really matters. We also need to figure out what's happening at 8. So it's going to be the 1 plus the 2 plus the entirety of 8 minus 2 pi, which again is definitely bigger than 1, which means the absolute minimum is 1, and that occurs at x equals 2 by the candidates test. So that's the whole problem. I hope this was helpful and good luck.